This is your weekly market prep where we talk about our key levels, our market moving data, indicators. We talk about the trade plan. We talk about the setup, the levels, everything that we need to crush it. Now, last week we did 71K in the market. Absolutely crushed it. I did multiple trade recaps, multiple sessions on learning and training. You can go watch these videos here to understand. You can watch my levels from last week because we're building on those levels in order to crush this thing this week. And we released our new ebook, How to Day Trade with a Full-Time Job. I did it for many years at a high level, very successful. I've shared my setups, my tips and tricks with you. Click the link attached to the video. Get on the list. Get it. You'll receive an email to get that thing. And let me tell you, we're getting ready to cook this week. It's OPEX. It's OPEX. It's OPEX. Oh, my goodness. We go to the bank. This may be a six-figure week. If we stick to the plan, we might just hit it. Are you ready? All right. Let's get it. All right, so this is your weekly market prep. Again, go watch our videos from last week so you can understand the levels, how we did, what we said, the volume, things shifting. You can understand how we ended the week around 71K. It was an excellent week. We're looking to do more this week because I believe Vol will return. All right, so here we are. Let's get to our agenda. Last week's action, you can watch the videos to see what happened and the training. In every video I do, I try to leave you with training. It's not just a trade recap. It's a training on how we got the profits that we received, all right? News, sentiment, all that stuff is in the videos that we, uh, we, we we talked about last week. So go watch them, all right? We'll put the links attached here, all right? Sentiment, levels, and plan. We'll talk about that, what the market can expect this week. What are our members saying about us? Every week we highlight testimonials and feedback. What are indicators that what are the indicators that we're using and how they're working for us? And then we're going to talk about the free training that you have here on YouTube and social media. And we're going to talk about the paid training that you have available to you. All right, so let's get to it. Here's our major data events. Of course, this week, man, CPI, PPI, retail sales, manufacturing index, unemployment numbers, OPEX, and a bunch of Fed members running their mouth. F Monday, Fed budget comes out at 2 p.m. That'll see some interesting action in the market. Uh, core CPI Tuesday, and then Wednesday, PPI core, uh, uh, manufacturing index, retail sales month over month, all dropping at 8.30 in the morning. Then Thursday, jobless claims, uh, Philly manufacturing index, 8.30. Retail sales for uh, uh, Britain, we're going to talk about that and how that will impact, well, very shortly, it will impact uh, all overall retail sales uh, in our markets as well. And foreign investors are really watching that too. And so building permits will drop at 8.30. So this is really, with earnings, this is really a retail-driven week. So that's why I've got it listed here uh, today or for this week to watch, okay? All right, who's bumping their gums? All right, so everybody. I won't re recap uh, or read all the people here. Monday's a pretty open day. Tuesday's pretty open. Wednesday, one or two there. Thursday is pretty loaded. Thursday is loaded from 7 to 12 in the morning. Somebody somewhere is talking, expect some volatility to kind of appear in the market there and, and raise its head, uh, especially coming off of this week's numbers for CPI and PPI and the core numbers. Um, they'll have an opinion on that. And what we're looking for is their stance and tonality, especially the uh, FOMC members and, and all of those, all of them that, that will have some type of um, as, it, as it pertains to monetary policy, right? Some of the things that they're talking about may, may or may not be related to monetary policy, but you can bet your bottom dollar that some of those uh, questions or some of those statements, they'll interweave in their, their feelings or insights as and how they feel about the, the, the current status. So we'll be looking for that. Friday, another loaded day, uh, coming into the end of the week, coming into OPEX from uh, about that 8.45 to 10 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be looking uh, for volatility to kind of stall and then pop into the market. So all you scalpers, this may be a scalper's paradise this week. All right, what to watch for? Here we go. Retail earnings and sales. Well, next week, this week, and we're talking about, uh, we'll get earnings report from major retailers like Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Macy's, which could offer more insight into robust consumer spending um, that powers GDP growth in the third quarter. On Wednesday, the U.S. Consensus Bureau 
will or Census Bureau will issue data on national retail sales for October, which could indicate whether this momentum continued into the fourth quarter. Retail sales, which are not adjusted for inflation, were likely flat in October after rising 0.7 in September. All right, so let's talk about October inflation reports. Well, we'll get the latest updates for inflation uh, this week and um, starting with the October or the CPI on, on, uh, on Tuesday. Consumer prices likely rose just 0.1 last month. According to projections from the Cleveland Fed, after gaining 0.4 in September, they're projected to have risen from the same period last year, decelerating from 3.7 annual uh, gain in September. Core prices, which exclude volatile food and energy, we know that, likely rose 0.3 last month, matching September's pace, and are expected to be up 4.2 from October last year. On Wednesday, uh, we're looking at the PPI coming in. Our producer price index for October, tracking inflation from the standpoint of firms that provide goods and services. As these goods and services move down the line, the added inflation that's attached to them, that's how we track goods and services, and the inflation of that is at PPI. That's very important. Um, it's considered a leading indicator of consumer prices, and business tend to pass on higher costs to consumers. Well, guess what? We're talking about another government shutdown. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm very tired of talking about these government shutdowns, but I have to do it because it impacts the market. So here we go. If congressional leaders fail to come up with a funding solution before Friday, uh, up to a million federal workers may be furloughed uh, or forced to work without pay, while certain programs like uh, the S or the SNAP uh, Nutrition Assistance Program and uh, the Disaster Relief could be cut or sharply reduced uh, to a lack of funding. A shutdown could also affect the GDP, nation's economy. Uh, Goldman Sachs estimated in September that the federal shutdown could shave about 0.2 percent points off the nation's gross domestic product or GDP for each week the shutdown lasts. That's a lot as unpaid federal workers would be forced to curtail their spending. However, here's the bright side. According to Goldman, uh, they think that it's unlikely to get to the point of a shutdown in this round of funding talks. All right. So here's our earnings for the week. We've got some nice ones up there. Home Depot, Monday.com. We've got, uh, who else do we have? Cisco, Target's on deck, Walmart's on deck, and a bunch of others, TJ Maxx and the like. A lot of setups. A lot of setups will be presenting themselves. A lot of swings happening. So here are two setups that I like. All right, Home Depot and Cisco Systems. Let's get to it. Here we go. Home Depot. Home Depot headlines a busy week of retail earnings with the Home Depot or Home Improvement Retailer set to disclose its third quarter results ahead of Tuesday's open. Now, UBS Global Research Analysts, some uh, folks over there, uh, think that uh, most likely the outcome for Home Depot upcoming print is, is a lack of major shift in narrative. Demand in the category remains soft due to the pressures of the consumer. That's no secret. Uh, the shift of spending in other areas like entertainment and normalization of purchase cycles uh, Lesner, which was the research analyst that uh, made this comment, said that, uh, look, this thing has not uh, this thing is still soft. It's not running. The analysts also add that uh, it's also known, of course, uh, the question is, how long will it last? So we we, under, we understand that this is the status of the economy for the retail sales in some areas. But how long is this going to last? Now, notice this. Most likely a recovery won't be in sight until the second half of 2024. I agree with that statement as well. In the meantime, the market will be looking for indicators, uh, indications of the level of sustainable margins and any signs of increase discounting as demand weakens. So as a group, analysts all around the street expect Home Depot uh, to report earnings of about 3.58 bucks per share, down 15.6%. All right, let's talk about one of my favorite Cisco. It's a slow mover, but I, I, I like the company um, coming from tech. A nerd, uh, multiple certifications all the way up to tech stack, i.e. all that cool stuff. It's it's I've been tracking Cisco for many, many years, uh, at least two decades. And I, I I like Cisco, but I also am realistic and understanding on how the market is responding and can respond. Because when it comes to data networking equipment, Cisco, especially in your Garter Quadrant, uh, they're going to be at the top. And they're also going to require the big bucks too. So let's get to it. Another Dow Jones stock making an appearance on the earnings calendar is Cisco Networking Equipment Specialist unveiling its fiscal fir uh, first quarter earnings report after Wednesday's close. Analysts on average are expecting earnings 97 cent per share. Uh, uh, Raymond James analyst has a lower revenue target of 13.6 billion for Cisco fiscal Q1. This is due in part to various reports this earnings season that indicate softness in sales from telecommunications firms and hyperscale operators. And, and, and that's 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 not a um, you know that's not a shocker. 
that's not a shocker. Uh, the, 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 the IT budget is going to be a little tighter. Um, recently downgraded the blue. Uh, this it, also they were recently downgraded to market perform from outperform, which is basically hold hold uh, from buy um, amid expectations that lower campus sales will lead to an overall revenue decline this fiscal year. And while the analyst says Cisco's acquisition of Splunk makes strategic sense, I very much agree with this statement. Uh, the commitment to buy the cybersecurity form at $28 billion lowers Cisco's ability to make other deals and raise its dividend or buy other companies. Um, I'm not, I, I agree with that, but I think that they will still uh, figure out some things. Cisco, uh, you know, historically has been an acquisition giant, and when they see a deal, they pounce. So, you know, this is a very good company to get bought out by uh, Cisco. So, if you got a platform or something that helps in the networking space or anything in this space, uh, very good to be bought out by them. Right. Look at Meraki. Right. All right. So let's talk about our levels. All right. Let's get to it. Here we go. Boom. All right. Would you look at that? Look at us. Now, here's that area of interest I've been talking about um, for a while here. Right. Four, four, 19, four, four, 30. We've already moved through it. I've traded this as well. So what we're looking to do is to hold this area. But let's I'll just I won't talk about the plan now. I'll just give you the levels pretty straightforward here to the low side. Four, three, eight, six dot fifty mid four, four, oh, four. And then we've got four, four, 13, four, four, 18. Our area of interest into the high side four, four, 35. Those are our levels. We're looking at the volume, uh, the wealth was volume profile. And we're looking at the uh, VVP indicator to give us an indication of sale pressure. All right. So I'll give you the plan in a minute. Let's keep it rolling. All right. So testimonials. What are people saying just yesterday? Way to go. Said I just finished three weeks green, three weeks green. Let, let, guys, you don't understand how amazing that is to not know how to trade. Come into the discord, listen to a guy, and then he help you, helps you understand the market. You're not blindly following, man. Awesome. He said, also my first four figure day this past week, man, give that man his roses. I'm saying, man, that's just awesome. I never thought I would finally find the training I needed. Uh, although I knew trading uh, could turn into a full-time job. I was stuck following gurus. Yep. That happens a lot. Uh, I'm not your guru. I'm a guy that understands how to trade at a high level. I'm also a business owner. I also understand and mentor in this industry flat out, but I <laughs> no way, no way. I'm a guru, right? Blindly uh, following gurus blind, which I knew wasn't suitable for turning this into a full-time job. I always was seeing the lagging indicators that it wasn't sustainable either. Interesting. You figured out on his own that this lagging indicator that everybody else is using, this is not doing you any good. Supply and demand, cup and handle, patterns, all that trash. No, 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 no. Something more uh, was needed, uh, needed to be learned. I still have a lot of training to do, coupled with the fact that I'm a slow learner, but I'm determined to get the training and become the best trader I can possibly be at the top of the wealth wells. If you have just found this community, take your time, make sure it's for you. But when you realize it is, <laughs> right, it's the place you have always been looking for, uh, just that you just didn't know existed. Join full speed ahead and don't look back. Appreciate your words. These are honest opinions from honest people. Nice job. All right. What are we using to crush this thing every single day? Well, we're going to talk about as I go over the plan, the VVP indicator link is below. It's just it gives me all the benefits of my system. All right. I've got the levels, the signals, the areas of interest. The, it's just a better way to trade. And we've got the wealth loss volume profile to the right here. This shifts here. I treat this like level two data for me. It's level two like data. I just understand and I teach you guys how to read these shifts coupled with the areas of interest. And we've got ourselves a winning system. What free training do you have available to yourself? Last week, we did over 71,000 in the market. Watch the video. It's a trade recap daily. We only took 12 trades, the best setups. And then you want a breakdown of what, what's going on, what this shaded area is and how we're, we know when to take that trade. The number one indicator for day traders, that's the VVB indicator coupled with the volume profile. And it improves your reaction times, your patience, your consistency, your market awareness. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. All right. So let's talk about the trade plan. So right off the bat, you'll have to transfer the levels and the understanding over to SPX and SPY. I'm going to talk about ES. Uh, we, we set to watch bonds. We always keep our eye on bonds right now as the market is shifting. But I will also add to this VIX. VIX is going to play a key role this week in volatility. OK, so keep your eye on VIX. We ended at 14.8. We'll talk more about that in the discord. I'll even talk about some key levels in VIX inside the private channel. Uh, I trade live on Mondays at the open, either one and one. We call it one hour or one trade. It depends on how 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 I feel. It depends on how we go. We're not in the business of just trading for the general public uh, for free. 
We're going to make sure that we give you the value, but you've always, always, you also have to put in the value, put in the work to get to this level. This week, I expect volatility and volume to definitely return with CPI, PPI, etc. It's going to be a banger of a week. There are going to be traps, so watch out. Let's get to the levels. All right, we've talked about the levels. This is what I expect. I am looking at foreign markets big time, okay? And what I'd like to see is a hold at that 4404. That would indicate strength, okay? As we move back up into this area of interest, right? However, I expect a lot of pinned action as Fed members and data prints, and we will trade the levels off of these areas here until we see uh, the market hold. I'm looking for a move toward Monday and Tuesday, toward the backside of the week, right? So when we get our print, obviously, of CPI on on uh, on Tuesday at 8.30, I'm looking for Monday's action and where we open here for lower volume. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for Monday to just kind of hold low volume there, chip around. My trade frequency will be two to four trades. And then I'll, I'll get the thing, I'll get things rolling if I see a breakdown or some type of shift in volume. Come Tuesday after the print, after the print at 8.30, depending on where we are, I'll either be going long or short off my levels and then toward the backside of the week into OPEX. I know that there has to be a, ba a rebalancing, right? And we'll see how many contracts and all the expirations. We'll get that data print. We'll talk about that inside the Discord. Based on that, that's going to tell you how heavy I'm going to go and where I'm going to go in the market. These are my levels. That's the plan daily, right? That's my trade frequency. And uh, I'm sticking to it, baby. All right. So here we go. Let's highlight one thing here. Last week, this was our, you can go watch our trade recap video. Uh, had you just taken one contract for every trade, I didn't take any losses. I had a low trade count last week, 12. You would have came out the market with about seven grand last week. Everything is live, okay? So inside the Discord, right? All the trades, if you want to track them, right? Outside of this spreadsheet, right? This is just a tracker so that we have a, a running uh, a tally. We have a running journal, uh, you can come in here and they're inside of the private channel right here, right here. All the trades are live in this channel. All the trades are live. You can see when I'm in, I'm out, PT met, in call, all of that. You see, and you can map all of that, match it all, see if I'm I'm the real deal. All right. So let's wrap this thing up right here. Okay. So summary, we went over our market moving events. We talked about our levels. We talked about the trade plan. Members are saying, we talked about training. Well, what tools do you have available? In the link attached to this video, you've got the Wealthwell's 90 day day trading journal. It works flat out. You've got how to day trade with a full-time job. There's pair training that you should purchase with this. I give you four setups inside of this book that every person that works a full-time job should know. And then I give you video training as a, a bonus or extra, if you want to select it, you can get the how to's where I give you more context, more training. They're about an hour a piece. I really get into it and show you, hold your hands, show you the setup and then the indicators. I mean, just flat out. It's, it's Katie in a box. That's what you, that's what you got. All right. I'm going to leave you with this quote. I've said it all the time. I've said it so many times. I've helped so many traders. Listen, three words. You want to change your trading. You want to change your financial life. You want to change your financial outlook, raise your standards. People don't always get what they want. They don't always get what they need, but they always get their standards. Draw a hard line in the sand. Say, I'm going to stop doing what everybody else doing. I don't know about this supply and demand junk. Stop it. These, these lagging indicators, the TTM squeeze, the Bollinger, the, the, the EMA, the estimate oscillators, all this stuff, the four to eight to 61, whatever. Stop it. Stop it. The patterns, Stop it. Wall Street is laughing at you. They're laughing at you. They call you dumb money because you're doing everything that everybody else and they're making money off of you with these traps. So listen, people don't always get what they want. They don't always get what they need. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you always get your standards. Expect more. Get into a better community, a better environment, better training, and watch your account and skills go up. Man, I'm excited. It's OPEX, baby. Coming out the market with Big Green. KD for the Wealth Wells. Signing out.